Hey guys, Carl Cooper here with On the Black, and I'm joined for my weekly chat by Dave Doyle of Mets Report. How you doing, Dave? Good. Thanks for having me. No problem. So it, it feels like uh, we haven't spoken in a long time, but it, it's only been a week, and I think that's because it was probably the longest week we've experienced in a long time with the Mets. <laughs> it, it sure was. This was uh, quite a week filled with many, many losses. Yeah, yeah. Se seven in a row to be exact. I'm, I'm happy that they won today on Sunday. Uh, to to end the losing streak, but you know, in in just kind of looking back over uh, the losses to the Rockies and then here to Atlanta, I mean, a few things are a bit alarming to me that stand out, and I just want to run down them and get your thoughts. Okay. First, um, we've seen a lot of bad fundamentals, you know, and that's one of the things that um, uh, Terry Collins talked about when the season started that this team was going to play the game the right way and that they were going to be fundamentally sound. And we've seen, you know, everything from errors in the field to not executing bunts at the plate to bad base running mistakes. So that's a bit alarming. The second thing is this team, you know, especially against the Rockies, they've had they ha they've had leads in, in some of those games and couldn't hold the lead, whether it's, been, you know, been the starting pitcher or the bullpen blowing it. And then the third thing is, uh, you know, Angel Pagan is just completely struggling so far this season. And, uh, you know, I'm not even sure what to think about that. And so, you know, I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but I want to get your thoughts on those. Uh, you know, uh, that's a lot to take in right there. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, those things are all correct. And, uh, you know, I think that there's uh, a couple things, you know, when like Daniel Murphy making that stupid play on the bases, trying to steal third mm -hmm. with nobody out and uh, down by three runs. I mean, it makes no sense whatsoever to do that. Right. So, you know, that that's just sheer stupidity to, to try to do that. And I have to assume, you know, that he got caught up in that moment and uh, tried to make something happen that – that was ridiculous. Yeah, but he's not even a base runner. I mean, he's not no. even, a, uh, you know, he's got no speed. He shouldn't even be, he shouldn't even be going anywhere. <laughs> and stealing third base of yeah. all things. So, you know, it, there's no excuse for that. It's stu it's just stupid to do that. And, uh, you know, the thing about Murphy is he's a guy that, you know, kind of lives on the edge on this roster as, as to he's, he's there because he's smart and a hard worker and all these things that we love about him. And then he goes and does something like that. And it really makes me question, you know, okay, if he's going to pull something like that, should, should he really even be on this roster? I mean, does he need to learn some more about the game before he should be here? Um, cause that, that was just crazy. And, and it was, uh, you know, I'm picking on that one particular thing, but, uh, it, it was kind of emblematic of some of the things that happened throughout this week that Absolutely. were, it were mind boggling to see. Yep. So I agree, you know, and Terry Collins told us we're playing the game the right way. We're playing, we're working on the fundamentals. And you know what? Jerry Manuel told us the same thing two years ago, too. Yeah. And uh, th this is what we get, you know. Yeah. yeah, I hear you. Well, I mean, again, the losing streak's over. You know, I pointed out a few things that I, I feel are, are really alarming to me. Um, you know, if this team was going out there and they were executing and they were still losing, that'd be one thing. But the fact that, you know, they can't get a bunt down, you know, in a key situation, you know, Willie Harris thinking about back to the to the Rocky series or Murphy making a bonehead play and stealing a base or, you know, the outfielders playing too deep and letting all these balls drop in front of them or even going back to a move that Terry Collins, you know, that I didn't like, uh, you know, against the Rockies with second and third and two outs and first base open and you pitch the Tula Whiskey and not walk them there. I mean, right. you know, I was right. in the ballpark that night and everyone was saying four, four pitches, walk them. <laughs> and they did, you know, yeah. so, you know, it's from the management on down to the players. It's just been, you know, uh, a very, very weird and troubling week. And, you know, again, I'm glad that they got the win uh, in the final game against the Braves. Um, you're right. They had to play perfect baseball to get that win. Um, you know, I, I, maybe they'll catch a break here. They are playing Houston back at home. Houston is a terrible team. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if they can win two out of three or somehow sweep this team, I believe it's a three-game series, yeah. you know, maybe that'll start to get them turned around. But, you know, right now, and and I was optimistic coming into the season, but right <laughs> now, you know, until they show me something, my, my optimism is gone. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well, they do get a little bit lucky this week because they have a home series against the worst team in the Central Division in the Astros and then another three-game series against the worst team in the Western Division in the D-backs. So, you know, but of course the Mets are the worst team in the Eastern Division. <laughs> so, um, so we'll see what they're made of this week, you know. Um, are they going to beat these teams that they should be or are they going to start folding up and, and – calling it a season real early this year. Right, right. So, um, you know, but all those things, I, I agree with everything you said, that it's been very, very ugly baseball, very ugly. And uh, But the one thing I will say that I did like to see today, you know, obviously they got the win, so that was good to see. But, um, you know, that uh, Terry Collins brought Capuano and Dickey out of the bullpen to make sure that they got that win today. He wasn't going to leave this up to Buckles and Burdak and these other guys yep. out of the bullpen, that he was bringing the best guys that he could get out there to, to save this thing. And I have to say that I like that. That And I think in past years that we, that we would not have seen that, that we would have heard, oh, it's still early in the season, mm -hmm. um, that type of thing. But I, I like that uh, Collins – made this like it was the seventh game of the World Series today, that they had to win this game today. It's just sad that it's April 17th and they have to play like that already. Yeah, and, but but you're right. I mean, that that was a nice creative thing that he did. And, and why not? I mean, the starters haven't been going past five innings anyway, so they're all well rested. It, you know, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't really matter, you know, which is another yeah. problem. But I won't get into that one just yet. But, you know, that the starters are not going deep into these games. So, you know, why not use them? And maybe uh, maybe that will send a message to these guys that are in the bullpen to light a little fire under them that, hey, um, you know, right now the manager is not confident in any of you guys, you know, so it, maybe maybe it'll serve as a wake up call for them. Who knows? I sure hope so. And really, the pitching has just been so bad from, uh, you know, especially the starters. I mean, Pelfrey has just been yeah. awful, yeah. awful, uh, putrid to watch. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Capuano hasn't been much better either. And uh, and I think Capuano really better watch his back because I like Dylan G. I like what Dylan G. did last September when mm -hmm. he was on the mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. I like what he did today when he got the spot start and you know last minute had to fly out for to Atlanta for a game and make that start. And uh, I, I think Capuano better watch his back because I, I I like G. Yeah, you know, and and it's good. It's a good point. And and I like G too. And the thing that I like about him. You know, unlike what Pelfrey does, unlike what Capuano and Nice does too, you know, he doesn't try to be too fine and finesse. He goes right after the hitters. He throws strikes. He hits his spots. And yeah. he's not up there, you know, he's not on He's not on the mound, you know, BSing and licking his hand and doing all other types of things, you know. Yeah. He goes out yeah. there and he throws strikes. So what's not like to like about that? Yeah, I, I like everything about him. I mean, you can have, he's not a fireballer, so you can see why uh, why the Mets organization might not think he has tons of potential. But you know what? I mean, the baseball is filled with guys that were not fireballers that had great careers. So, um, it, you know, throwing uh, over 90 does not necessarily make you a good pitcher. Look what Bobby Parnell's been doing mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. Jeez, he, he's, he throws 97, and he's been getting lit up this year. Yeah, and, so, and, yeah, uh, and I don't want to hear anyone tell me about him. Uh, being a potential closer for the future anymore until I see something. So yeah, yeah, he he throws heat, but he you know it's straight as an arrow and right down the middle of the plate, and anybody can hit that. So uh, throw you know I, that's what I like about G is that he does hit those corners. He moves up and down. He uh, you know rotates through his pitches that he's got. He works fast. Every there's a lot of things to like about him. And, uh, you know, I, I really think that um, that if anybody starts to falter, and I'm already starting to see some of that from Capuano, yeah. that, um, that G could be the next one to step in. And obviously Pelfrey has faltered, but they're not going to move Pelfrey out. You yeah, know? yeah. And, and the thing about Capuano, though, is even if you want to bring G in full time when Young gets back, you got the flexibility to put Capuano in the pen as another lefty, which the Mets need anyway. 
They do. Yeah. They do. And uh, Burdak has been questionable, and uh, apparently Burdak can't do anything against right handers. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, he is just strictly a left lefty specialist only. So yeah, uh, that that does limit you with yeah. uh, with him being the only lefty. Gotcha. And the last thing I want to ask you about something that you know we saw today, which I thought was pretty interesting and worked out, which is Josh Tolley batting second. You know, I I, I liked it, and and I tweeted earlier that. Um, you know, with his with the with the way he kind of uh, controls the bat at the plate, uses the entire field, takes pitches. You know, outside of him being slow, he's really kind of an ideal number two guy. I mean, what what are your thoughts? Uh, I like him hitting second too, and and uh, I like everything about him except that he can't throw any base dealers out. <laughs> um, but uh, that's another story. But uh, I like him hitting second as long as Angel Pagan's not hitting. If Angel Pagan's hitting like he has in the past, I mean, he's got to be at the top of the lineup. If if it's one of the two of them is going to be there, you know, right now Pagan's in a terrible rut, not hitting anything. Yeah. Um, so it's fine, you know, uh, let Pagan uh, try to figure it out at the bottom of the lineup for a while, and uh, and we'll see what happens. But I'm fine with Tolly there. I like him there, um, but I like Pagan better in the long term. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, hey, Dave, thanks for joining me. Uh, maybe next week's chat will be a bit more positive for us. You know, uh, we'll, we'll see how the Mets do this week. And for those of you out there watching, you can catch uh, Dave and I doing these weekly chats uh, every Sunday or Monday. And be sure to check Dave out over at MetsReport.com. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.